This video is sponsored by KEH Camera. Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I have a video that I've wanted to make for such a long time now. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I develop, scan, and edit color film. Please excuse my voice. It's a little bit rough after my recent trip to WPPI. And yeah, let's just get started. So first thing I'm going to do is transfer my film roll into a tank and a lot of people think that they need a dark room to do this. Uh, you actually don't. I love using a changing bag. So this bag has two holes for your arms, the sleeves, and on the inside it's completely blacked out. So you can actually transfer the film roll into a tank in this bag. I just put everything inside the bag, uh, the film roll, the tank, the spoolie and the tank lid. Then I zip it up tight and slide my hands through the sleeve holes and start transferring the film roll. So I actually sacrificed one of my film rolls to show you guys what happens uh, inside of the bag so definitely give this video a like. You're gonna break the seal and separate the paper from the film. It should be pretty easy. Now we're gonna feed the film through the spoolie and this is definitely the hardest and trickiest part of this whole process. I definitely recommend that you guys also uh, sacrifice one of your film rolls uh, and have something to practice on before you actually transfer your real film into the tank. The biggest thing I can give you guys is to look for these ridges on your spoolie. You can easily find them with just your fingertips. This is where you're gonna start feeding in your film. Once you slide just a little piece of the film through those ridges, you're gonna hold the rest of the film with your thumbs down so that it does not come out of the spoolie. And you're gonna start rolling the spoolie in your hands forward and feeding that film through all of the little ridges. Now that you're done, you're gonna put the lid back on, make sure that it's tight and secure, and you can take the tank out. And yes, all of this is done inside of the bag where you can't see anything and you can only feel things with your hands. Now we can finally get to the developing and working with chemicals. First thing you're gonna need is some sort of container for the water and I personally like using coolers because it will keep the temperature the same for longer. This specific cooler I got from Amazon and in fact all of the other products that I'm using today are gonna be listed in the description. Next is my C41 powder kit. I personally love these kits. I've used Cinestill and here I'm using Unicolor. They are super easy to assemble. You just follow the directions on the packaging. The powder from the kit is then mixed with water. Again, just refer to the instructions in the kit. And then I put them in these glass bottles and I use these specific film glass bottles that are coated with this dark brown color. Uh, the chemicals are photosensitive, so you wanna make sure you have the proper bottles so that the chemicals do not go spoiled. And then I also label each bottle with the developer Blix or stabilizer definitely do not want to mix up these bottles when you're developing. Next is my newest purchase from Cinestill. This helps you control the water temperature and it just changes your life. If you develop film at home, especially color film, I 100% recommend you guys get it. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really, really love this. You will also need a funnel to pour the chemicals back into the bottles. I use my phone to time the whole process, but you can also use just a clock or a watch. You'll need a thermometer to measure the temperature of the chemicals. And an optional thing, you can also get a squeegee tool that will help to dry off your film. But before we move on to the studio shots, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, KEH Camera. KEH is your one-stop shop to buy, sell, trade, or even repair used photography gear. Here you can find anything from film cameras, lenses and accessories to the newest digital ones. They have a huge inventory that gets updated all the time. But what's different about buying from KEH rather than eBay or Facebook Marketplace is that everything you see on their website has been quality checked by professionals. So you don't have to worry about buying broken gear. I personally love buying used as it saves money and it is better for the environment. Plus, when you buy from KEH, you get 180 day warranty and they have a 21 day return policy, so you have nothing to lose. 
If you are interested, check out the link in my bio for some discount codes. And again, thanks so much to KH Camera for sponsoring today's video. We are back and let's fill out our container, or in my case, the cooler, with some water. You might need to adjust the amount of water depending on the size of the container that you're using, but you just have to make sure that the water is covering most of the glass bottles and that it's covering your water heater as well, just like I have here. Now, following the instructions that come with the powder kit, I know that my developer and Blix should be at 39 degrees, while the stabilizer can be at room temperature. That's why I have only two bottles heating up at the moment because that's the developer and the Blix. So like I mentioned, my water heater is set to 39 degrees and once the water reaches that temperature, I can then insert a thermometer into a glass bottle with one of the chemicals. The water surrounding the bottles will heat it up and then the chemicals inside of the bottles will reach the temperature as well. This might take a while, so just keep an eye on it and once the temperature is ready, you are ready to pour them into your tank. I'm gonna take out my developer and pour it straight into the lid of the tank that has the film on the inside and I'm gonna set my timer to 3 minutes 30 seconds. All of these instructions again are inside of your powder kit. You will know that the tank is full because some of the water will actually stay at the top of the lid and once you filled it up fully I'm gonna take the little agitator that comes with the tank and start agitating the film on the inside. You need to do that to make sure that there's no air bubbles around and that the chemical is penetrating the film from all sides equally. When the 3 minutes and 30 seconds are up you can pour the chemicals back into the developer bottle using the funnel. After the developer comes the Blix, you literally do the same thing, but now for 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Blix is a pretty strong chemical, so before we add the stabilizer, we have to rinse it off. I'm adding the water from the cooler into the tank and I'm gonna set my timer for 3 minutes and agitating from time to time. After 3 minutes I dispose the water into the sink and this is the only time that I actually put chemicals down the drain because the concentration is very small here but when it comes to my developer, Blix or the stabilizer I keep it in these jars until I have enough of it to take to the hazardous uh, chemicals disposal uh, center in my city. Here comes the last step, we're gonna pour the room temperature stabilizer and time it for 1 minute. Now you can open up your tank, uh, take out your film, see if everything went well. You know, I messed up my film before. That's totally okay and it might happen to you. Uh, rinse off your film with just your regular room temperature tap water. And then I'm going to take my squeegee and just squeegee out whatever water is, is on the film. To dry my film, I use just a cheap tripod from Amazon and a clamp. Make sure to keep it in a place where there's not a lot of dust. Alright, now that the film is completely dry, we can start scanning. I'm using Epson V600 flatbed scanner. It's really affordable and it works pretty well. Now before I do any scanning, I make sure that I dust all of the surfaces and even Windex it if it's needed. And then I put on my rubber gloves. These are cheap and they work really, really well. Uh, I really like using these because I'm kind of clumsy and I leave fingerprints everywhere. Here I'm holding a glass holder from betterscanning.com. I do not use the holder that comes with the scanner because it's just plastic, it does not have any glass and the scans come out so much nicer and so much clearer with this glass holder. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them, I am just really really love this product. So I usually cut down my film roll into separate pieces, usually with three pictures on each. And I'm gonna place it down with a matte side. This is how you correctly scan film. You're gonna see that one side is more glossy and one is more matte. So matte side down. 
All right, so now that we have the film in the scanner, it's time to actually scan it. I'm using the software called ViewScan. I used to use the native software that came with the Epson scanner, but I realized that that wasn't really giving me really nice colors. And with ViewScan, it's a lot easier to get really nice colors and just a better quality scanning. I will leave the link to ViewScan in the description. It's not sponsored. Uh, a friend of mine recommended it to me because I was complaining about how hard it is for me to get the color correctly and he was like use that and yeah it's so much better so here in the input you can just kind of uh, stop the video and uh, copy whatever I'm using if you're gonna be using view scan and then for the output these are my settings and I'm scanning everything in the TIFF format uh, because I'm planning to then edit it even more in Photoshop if you're just scanning it you know and not doing anything else with it you can obviously uh, scan it in jpeg as well but yeah i prefer tiff so yeah i'm gonna press preview and it's gonna start scanning just a small preview of the film to kind of show me what it looks like and then once that's done i can actually do the actual full scan of it um now Scanning takes a while. This is probably my least favorite part of the whole process. Um, like right now, I already pressed preview and it's still scanning it just for the preview. And it takes even longer for the actual scan. But of course, with film, it's still worth it, you guys. So I'm gonna get back to you when I already have it scanned. All right, so it just finished scanning. As you can see, it already gives me like a little area, the crop area. So I'm just going to actually put it to where I want it to be cropped, right here. And it kind of just auto adjusts the colors immediately. By the way, if you want to scan just one image, you could select just one image. Uh, but I actually want to scan both of them. So I'm gonna select both of these images. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to color right here and this way I can adjust some stuff. By the way, if your film comes out uh, rotated in the wrong way, you can press these right here and it will rotate it into the correct way. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that because it's a little bit easier to see. Now here is where you can adjust the color. So the picture looks a little bit too blue and too green. So here I'm gonna make it more yellow. Oh, that's going blue, sorry, this way. So I'm just adjusting it to make it more yellow right there and then I'm gonna make it less green maybe more yellow okay and then we can also play around here with different settings you can also experiment with the presets that they have for different types of film. I usually put whatever film I'm shooting with, so I put here Kodak Portra and 400 and C, but you can definitely kind of play around and see if it gives you a better result. Uh, let's try something different just for funsies. Ooh, that's actually kind of cool. I think I will stick to Portra. I like it. So anyways, whenever you are ready uh, and you're happy with the colors, you can press scan and it's going to start scanning the image that you cropped. Again, this takes quite a while. I'm actually going to time how long it takes because I never do that and tell you guys exactly how long it took to scan these two images. After I scan the image, I'm going to transfer the TIFF into Photoshop and do some final adjustments. I do even more color correction. I take out whatever dust is left out. I do some dodge and burn for skin and just overall image. And then finally, I'm doing some sharpening. And this is the final result and few other pictures that I scanned from this photo shoot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions about developing or scanning or shooting film please let me know and actually the biggest tip i can give you guys is to find someone in your area that already shoots film and ask them to tag along ask them to teach you that's actually how i personally learned and you know people who usually shoot film are really passionate about it and they will be glad to show you 
everything about it. So yeah, give this video a like, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!